pastor here at Friendship United Methodist Church. Welcome again to an empty sanctuary, an empty family life center. Uh, we are still observing the COVID virus isolation and we're not meeting in large groups as we have been traditionally doing um, as we meet on Sunday mornings. So we're still doing this uh, recorded message and I'm very grateful to James Glenn and to the band uh, for all their hard work. Uh, so James Glenn specifically because he's our videographer and is doing a great job with all of this. Um, I want to say thank you for everybody who has uh, looked at this. I want to say thank you for everybody who has participated in our food drive that happened on Thursday. And uh, thank you for everybody who is continuing to send in your tithes, your gifts, to keep the church going. Please consider doing that if you're able. And we are grateful. Thank you. So let us pray. Lord our God. We come before you with praise and thanksgiving. We come before you asking, Lord, that we be relieved of this virus, that our people will be healed, that all will be well and get back to normal. Lord God, we pray for a new normal, a normal where we appreciate all we have, a normal where we appreciate one another, a normal, Lord, where our turning to you in this time, as in times past when there have been difficulties in our nation and our world, that we will stay with you. Lord God, give us strength. Heal the sick. Protect those who minister to those who are sick. Protect those, Lord, who take care of others in every way. And we are grateful, Lord, for those who continue to stay at their jobs, in grocery stores, in fire departments, police departments, ambulance drivers, and all those, Lord, who keep us well. We are grateful. Thanks be to God. Rushing in 
to make me hear your love is fierce like a hurricane that I can't escape tear through the atmosphere your love is fierce your love is fierce your love is fierce will be the last Sunday uh, before Palm Passion Sunday and then Easter on April 12th. And the church council will meet tonight to discuss what we will be doing about those two Sundays, April 5th and April 12th. And we'll let you know as soon as possible. So this concludes my Lenten series. And it concludes with the idea of sharing. Sharing the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ with your neighbor, your friend, the stranger that you meet, or anywhere you seem to go. There's a phenomenon today online that we can share our opinion about restaurants. We can rate places. We can give them a check or a thumbs down if we like them or don't like them. It's critically important today that word of mouth helps the church to share the gospel. And let me give you an example. If someone asks a group of people, what shampoo do you use? They'll get as many opinions as there are people in the room and maybe more. And some of them will be passionate about their opinion and their choice of shampoo. And the person will go away with a, a variety of options and one perhaps that has really convinced them that that is the way to go we can review a church online we can give a restaurant five stars or no stars or two or three we are comfortable talking about what shampoo we use and what our favorite restaurants are but sometimes we're less comfortable talking about our faith. But in talking about our faith, we are sharing the gift of Jesus Christ with other people. Let me read to you from the Gospel of Matthew. In the ninth chapter, the 36th to the 38th verse. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless and like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is the word of God for the people of God and all people. Thanks be to God. Amen. The harvest is plentiful. There are plenty of people in our own families. There are plenty of people in our workplaces, in our communities, in the places where we shop that have never been invited to come and hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Perhaps they did not grow up in a church, their family never went, and they were never invited. There are also plenty of people who have been invited to church and have gone to churches and left disappointed. Maybe they didn't hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe instead they heard the opinions about other people that the people in that church had. Maybe they heard about how they wish to exclude this person or that person. And so, therefore, they chose not to go back to a church. But you and I can invite people to our congregation. 
We could invite them with the same passion we might tell them about our favorite restaurant or shampoo. We can convince them of the goodness of the product, if you will. And so I invite you to look around wherever you are and see the crowds and have compassion on them. Because everyone today is, as Jesus says, harassed. Everybody today deals with this COVID virus. Everybody today is dealing with the difficulty of the shortages of whatever it might be in the grocery stores or at the Walmart. And we are like sheep without a shepherd. All of us. Like sheep without a shepherd. If we do not know the good shepherd. Which is Jesus Christ. Jesus says to his disciples. The harvest is plentiful. That is still the case. The opportunity to share our faith. Has never been more important. But the laborers are few. Many of us are unwilling or uncomfortable about sharing our faith. So let me tell you a couple of stories. When I went up to school at Appalachian State University in 1983, I started taking a variety of classes and somewhere along the way, perhaps in 84 or 85, or sorry, 85 or 86, I took some classes in the Department of Religion. I started with the Old Testament as literature. That's how a state university teaches the Bible. And I was fascinated. I had read parts of the Bible, but I have to be honest. There were plenty of people who told me they read the Bible. There were plenty of people who told me they went to church that didn't seem to live out the precepts of Jesus Christ. To love one another, to care for one another. It seemed more like it was a club for them where they could be with their friends, hang out at lock-ins, go on trips. It didn't seem to change how they treated the people who were outside of their little group. So it didn't have that big of an impact on me in high school. But at college, through reading the Old Testament and then the class called the New Testament as literature, I was given the Bible in a new way. Not filtered necessarily through the prejudices of others, but directly. By reading and studying and by the witness of those professors, Dr. Steinmetz, excuse me, Dr. Strickland, Dr. Steins, and Dr. Hauser, by witnessing to me about their faith, they gave me a path to faith along with another person in my life, the person who is now my wife, Leah, who witnessed to me and showed me what it could be like to be a Christian on a daily basis. They witnessed to me, they cared for me, and they shared with me the gospel of Jesus Christ in word and in deed. There are other people in my life at different times and places who have shared the gospel. My first pastor, Clyde Penry, at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Charlotte. And there was a couple at St. Paul's named Mays and Elizabeth Cunningham. When Leah and I got married, I was living in Charlotte, she joined me there. And after our honeymoon and another friend's wedding the following weekend, she and I went to church. The first Sunday we were back in Charlotte. We walked into a church and were greeted by wonderful people. And Mays and Elizabeth Cunningham, who were probably in their 60s at the time, took us under their wing. They brought us into the church. They welcomed us. 
They encouraged us. They sat with us. They helped us understand where everything was in the building and what was going on. They even had us over to their own home. And Mays and Elizabeth Cunningham provided me with all the items that I needed to begin my ministry. A new Bible, a new hymnal, a robe, and stoles. And they sent me off to proclaim the good news at my first appointment in Ranger, North Carolina, west of Murphy. Their gift of compassion and sharing their life with me and their faith with me and my wife changed our lives. Sharing our faith can change the life of other people. It can change our life also when we share. When we continue to affirm our faith to others, our faith grows and deepens within us. And it grows stronger. And as we talk to people about what our life in Christ means to us, we grow more convinced and convicted that God has come to us to save us from sin and death and to renew our lives by the Holy Spirit. And we are given a new opportunity to serve God. So I want to invite you to share your faith when and where and with whom you can. And I want to invite you to, as I said in the early part of the sermon, to review our church on Google, to put a check mark and five stars and say something about us because other people look for that. And by word of mouth, just as you would share about a great restaurant or a new hair care product, share about the congregation that you're part of. Share about the people you love and care for and what the church means to you, what your faith means to you, and what all the people that you love mean to you. To share our faith is to share part of ourselves. But God has already shared himself completely with us through the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ who now lives within us and calls us to share that new life with others. So I invite you to go out into this world and share the good news of Jesus Christ in this hurting world, in this place where people need direction, in this time when we need comfort and assurance that there is more to life than the COVID virus. There is the life of Jesus Christ. And that life is eternal. And that life can be given to us. And we can share that with others. So they too can receive the life giving love of Jesus Christ. Go therefore in peace and share all that God has done for you. Share the power and the presence of God's love in your life and share it with as many as you can. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace and be well. Blessings. Let us not lift our souls to another. 
So give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees, that seeks your face, oh God of change. clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to another oh God let us be the generation that sees seeks your Give us clean hands, give us pure heart, give us clean hands, let us not lift our souls. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, oh God, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be the generation that sees and seeks your face. Oh God of Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation that sees, that seeks your face. Oh God of Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation that sees, that seeks your face.
middle of the mystery. 